Let me just go over the very last part of boundary layers. And that is the, um, so before going there, what we've done so far, we've, we've talked about laminar boundary layers, turbulent boundary layers. I've given you all the equations in terms of the boundary layer thickness, momentum thickness, local skin friction coefficient, total skin friction coefficient, which allows you to work out the skin friction drag force. So you just use those equations and you calculate things, right? For both laminar and turbulent boundary layer. Now, here is, this is a very important part, and I, I think anyone who does uh, skin friction calculations later on in their life, they need to realize um, we can't just assume fully laminar or fully turbulent uh, and calculate things using the equations I've shown you. In real life, life is a little bit more complicated because in a typical situation, what we have is uh, the boundary layer starts at, as lamina and then it actually transitions. It goes through small distance transition uh, region and then it goes to turbulence. Um, so in a real kind of situation, what you guys need to think about is you need to calculate, to calculate the skin friction drag correctly if you just assume the whole turbulent boundary layer is, um, is laminar, quick question for you guys. Would that underestimate or overestimate your skin friction drag if you assume it's fully laminar? Would the skin friction drag be lower than what it should be or higher? From what we've been talking. Hmm? It would be lower, yeah. So that shows you. It's actually a very serious consideration here because um, if you're not very careful, you're telling the, the, the aircraft designers who are relying on your being a, an airspace kind of expert, but you made the assumption that the boundary layer will be fully laminar. What you're telling them actually, you get much less drag. So they go, they do all the hard work, they design the engines to be a lot smaller, and then when the aircraft try and flies, there's suddenly a big problem, right? So it's actually quite important to why we need to consider these, this real case. On the other hand, if you assume that everything is turbulent, you are overestimating the skin friction drag. And again, people will, will take those calculations and they actually oversize the engines unnecessarily. All right? That's also not a good thing. So this is why when you do your calculations in real life, you need to know there is actually a mixture of boundary layer that is laminar that gives you a certain skin friction drag and the turbulent part will give you a certain skin friction drag. And that's when you combine together, that's actually more the more accurate way of representing it. So I just, I'll just try to explain to you how we do uh, this mixed boundary layer calculation. You will have the opportunity, uh, there is I think uh, one or two questions which has mixed boundary layer calculation. In fact, I'm giving you an example here with the mixed boundary layer calculation so you can see how we do the calculations. Anyway, so, so what we do, we assume that the boundary layer always starts lamina, which is true, and then at some point, okay, it will transition immediately to uh, turbulent boundary layer. That's, of course, an assumption. In real life, it doesn't happen, but this is to allow us to do the calculation. So at this point here, this length, where the, the, the boundary layer transitions, okay, we call it X transition, which is the same as the total length of the boundary layer when it's laminar. So X transition, where, where transition happens, we assume it happens immediately or inst instantaneously. That's the same as the length of the boundary layer or the length over which the boundary, the laminar, the boundary layer is laminar. I hope you guys can see that. After that, because it transitions immediately, then we get this boundary layer, which is turbulent. Fine. And now, of course, uh, the problem is um, to be able to use the equations I've shown you, whether turbulent or laminar, what you guys will see here, they all start from uh, zero thickness. So they always start at somewhere where the thickness of the boundary layer is zero, and then you do the calculation. Which means, if I was to apply the equations to the, to the turbulent boundary layer from here, that's not, it will not work, because here, I, al I already have a thickness, yeah? Which means, we have to assume that the turbulent boundary layer must have started somewhere else where the thickness of it is zero, and we, that point could be here, all right? Which is typically a point in front of the transition to turbulent, where the transition from laminar to turbulent occurs. Now, 
then from here, we can apply the equations I've shown you, because the thickness is zero. That's, that's, that's how the equations are applied. It always starts from where thickness is zero to any other thickness. So now we can apply the equations to this region of turbulent boundary layer. Now, the problem is, as you guys can see, uh, there is an overlap region here where I'm calculating the, uh, the laminar boundary layer, but also I've got this part here, which is turbulent boundary layer. So obviously, we can't account for the same thing twice, so we have to take it away. And because we're calculating things based on the turbulent boundary layer, the effective drag of this region here, the overlap region, must be based on the turbulent part, okay? So we take it away, and we know this, in reality, this is a, a laminar part anyway, so we keep the laminar part, take away this, and account for things from here to the end of uh, the plate. So, So in, in, in summary, laminar boundary layer grows up to the transition point, okay? Um, and then there is a turbulent boundary layer which grows at a distance in front of the transition point which we need to take, to take account of. This creates an overlap region where the boundary layer, the turbulent boundary layer grows uh, till the end. But because we already uh, counted for this region using the laminar boundary layer, we need to take away any drag caused by this overlap region due to the turbulent boundary layer. So this means in the end that the total drag, it's all explained there anyway, but the total drag on the plate in this case will be the drag due to the laminar boundary layer plus the drag due to the turbulent boundary layer as it grows from here, from zero thickness, minus, you have to take away the drag in the overlap region, which is caused by the turbulent boundary layer. That's all, that's the best I can explain it. So, laminar plus turbulent minus the turbulent drag caused uh, in the overlap region. So you've got three terms, laminar, turbulent, minus the overlap region, which is turbulent as well. You need to take it away. And that's how we do it. And we, we do it using these equations. So in the laminar, part we apply the laminar equations, in the turbulent part we apply the turbulent equations and uh, we take away the overlap region. Now, I'm sure you're all looking at me blank because it's uh, kind of, I appreciate you probably don't get it straight away. So, um, we are 45 to, oh, okay, 45 past 11. Hmm. I'll leave it to you guys. Do you want me to go through the example quickly? Yeah? You're happy to spend like 10 minutes? Okay, let, let's do an example. Okay. Before doing the example, let's just go back to this uh, picture here. So, lamina, turbulent boundary layer, and the overlap region. Just remember those things. Okay. If I have a plate, let's say, of length L, Clearly, guys, you can see that, okay, first of all, we agreed that the transition distance is the same as the distance over which the laminar boundary layer grows. So, XTR is the same as X laminar. Uh, number two, the X turbulent, which of course starts where the boundary layer the grow, starts to grow from zero, that's the whole length of the X turbulent. Now, this whole length is L minus X transition minus that plus the overlap itself. So that would give you the X turbulent. Now the Reynolds number uh, for the transition, or X transition, you just, by definition, you just put X transition there, so that's okay. And then of course, um, the, dist the boundary layer thickness at the transition here is the same as the thickness, <coughs> is the final thickness of the laminar boundary layer. So. Hopefully you guys can see that, but the thickness of boundary layer is given by this equation from the other equations, and it's based on the X transition or X lamina. The overlap uh, thickness, again, which is this one here, is the same as the, thick, the final thickness of the uh, lamina boundary layer. And in terms of an equation, okay, and it's also, if you guys can see here, it's the same as the thickness of the turbulent boundary layer here. So we use the turbulent boundary layer equation, but for 
the overlap region because it goes from here up to there. And uh, in terms of uh, skin friction coefficients, uh, then that's just use the definition straight away. Anyway, so let, let me get, go through an example very quickly. So it says, what is the height of a fully laminar boundary layer at the trailing edge of a plate? And that plate has a length of 1.22 meters if the free stream uh, density is 25 meters per second. So what's the height of the boundary layer, assuming it's fully laminar? That's quite simple. So what we can do, um, straight away, you say the, bond, the boundary layer thickness of a laminar boundary layer is by definition 5.2 times x divided by the square root of the Reynolds number based on that x. We're asking you to calculate the height at the trading edge. So x will be equal to the length of the, the plate itself. Okay, so you just substitute x by the length, which is 122. And then the Reynolds number itself will be based on that x. So in the definition Reynolds number, rho times u or v times x, which is L, 122, that will give you a Reynolds number of, what is that, 2.075 million. The thickness of the boundary layer at the trading edge, if, the f is, if it's fully laminar, turns out to be 4.4 millimeters. Very, very small. Now, that's the first case. The second question says, uh, what is the height of the boundary layer at the trailing edge of the plate if we assume for the same conditions, same length, same speed, but we assume it's fully turbulent? Okay? So all you guys need to do, use the turbulent equation for uh, the, the thickness of the boundary layer. So this is the equation, okay? 0.383 times x times the fifth root of the Reynolds number based on x. Because we're asking you to calculate it at the trailing edge, x becomes L, the length of the plate. So you just substitute with that. And the Reynolds number, of course, uh, based on that length. And you get 25.47 millimeters. So immediately you guys can see the assumption of a laminar boundary layer gave us a thickness at the trailing edge of 4.4 millimeters. But the assumption of a turbulent boundary layer gave us 25. So that's like... Uh, six times more, which, which actually, which makes sense because I've told you that the thickness of boundary layer, which is turbulent, is, uh, much, is much more than uh, the one which is laminar. Okay, everyone clear? So hopefully that's not too difficult. This is where kind of, kind of we, people get a little bit lost, but I've, I actually I've, I've, at least I've sh kind of... Uh, written the steps there that show you how to solve the problem. So the first thing is, if we're asking you to calculate the drag, where now we have a mixed boundary layer. First part is laminar, and then you got transition to turbulence. So the equation, just as I showed you here, the equation is the total drag is the drag due to the laminar boundary layer, plus the drag due to the, the whole turbulent boundary layer, which we have to assume it grows from zero, minus the drag due to the turbulent boundary layer in the overlap region, which is here. So let's just apply this and see what we get. Um, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to find out the, uh, the transition point. Where does the boundary layer transition from laminar to turbulent? Well, you do that by, um, sorry, we're calculating the transition uh, distance. Oh, I forgot something here. The Reynolds number for transition is 1 million. Okay. So, by definition, the Reynolds number is rho u times x transition divided by dynamic viscosity. The Reynolds number is 1 million. That allows us to work out. You rearrange the equation for the transition distance. So, I hope you guys can see that. So, you substitute with 1 million for the transition Reynolds number, as is given. Um, and then you work out the transition location as 0.5877 meters along the plate. So this is what the distance, what we're talking about, this here, XTR or X lamina, that's 0.58. Okay, that's where the transition occurs for a Reynolds number of 1 million. Right, so at that point, remember, at the point of the transition, everything before it, is laminar boundary layer, so I can calculate the thickness of the boundary layer there, assuming fully laminar boundary layer. Therefore, the, the thickness of the boundary layer at the transition is calculated 
because it's laminar boundary layer. You, so you use the equation for laminar boundary layer using the distance now is the x transition because you just calculated it. Put the numbers in, you get 3.05 millimeters. <laughs> now, the overlap region itself, okay, uh, by definition, because it's turbulent, okay, let me just go back to show you. This overlap region here, which is underneath the red curve, that's a, a turbulent region, okay? If you want to calculate the, 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 uh, the growth of the boundary layer from where it starts till where it ends, which actually happens to be from this point to, uh, to where XTR is, but we need to calculate this distance. So the, the, the thickness of the boundary layer there is based on turbulent boundary layer, but the thickness is also equal to the laminar boundary layer thickness there, which was just calculated. But by definition, uh, we based it on the turbulent uh, boundary layer growth, which you just use the equation, where x here becomes the x for the overlap region. Okay, of course we don't know that yet, we need to calculate it. Okay, but that's the equation for it. Now, the overlap, uh, so from here, so this is slightly complicated, but Reynolds number is based on the overlap distance, and we have x overlap here, you need, we're looking for x overlap. So hopefully this equation, uh, you rearrange it for x overlap, it will give you this number here, which is 0086 meters. So what we've just calculated is this length here. So this length is 008 meters, all right? Finally, uh, we need to calculate the, the, uh, the length of the turbulent region, which is now we know XTR, we know what L is, we know the X overlap, we just calculated, that gives us the X turbulent. And finally, you get the force skin friction coefficients. So for the turbulent one is this, so you have to use the X turbulent for it, which you get from here. For the lamina, it's the, the same as the, the transition length, and for the overlap is the overlap length, which is that one there. And once you know the uh, skin friction coefficients, we know you multiply by half rho, your infinity squared times S. That will give you the skin friction. So this is a common factor for all of them. So this is the laminar. When you multiply this by that, that will give you the laminar uh, uh, drag, skin friction drag. This is the turbulent friction drag. Take away the drag from the overlap region. If you guys look very carefully, I'm multiplying by two because the total drag is for both top and bottom of the, of the plate or the surface. Now, I'm pretty sure you probably didn't understand anything from that explanation, but I've done my best. So, you've got the example being shown to you how to do it. You will have to do the calculations, which is good anyway for you. But if you guys get stuck on how you do it, um, I'm very happy to come, to come and see me and uh, explain it more. So, we're finished with the boundary layers now.